All Things Motoring International is owned and brought to you by SA's most trusted online vehicle platform, Change Cars. Our name says it all. Whether you're looking to sell, need advice, need finance, or need insurance, Change Cars has you covered. Coming up this week on All Things Motoring International. Mike and Gugu try out what Mike calls surfing for lazy dudes, the latest electric surfing craze, and Gugu attends the Cobra Club of South Africa's concourse event. So I'm at Festival of Motoring, Something catches my eye, Gugu. You know how much I like water. I think we all like cars, yeah. but e-foil, what do you know about e-foil? So e-foil for me is a dream as a former surfer. So I used to surf a lot right. and the progression from surfing is getting onto a board that floats over water and it runs on, a, on its own. So surfing for lazy dudes. Surfing's for lazy dudes. So I've never seen e-foil in the country until Festival of Motoring. So it blew my mind as well. So I seen eFoil on uh, Facebook and I'm honest when I say, and it wasn't uh, the manufacturers or the people who were posting it, I actually thought it was fake. I thought really? it was like, yeah, I thought it was like an AI, artificial intelligence, computer generated image, but behind us, three uh, surfboards? eFoil boards. 100%. Who's out first, you or me? Look, I don't mind. I mean, can you know how to do it? I personally do not predict that I will get up. I'm going to try my best 26 times if after that I don't get it right. You're the man. Okay. It's going to be an interesting one. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I've always wanted to do the e-foiling thing and it's always been an overseas thing where overseas people are doing it, but this company actually brings it into the country and today is that time. So talking about the company, we at Emerentia Dam. I've lived in Joburg my whole life. I've never been to Emerentia Dam. First time yourself, been here before? Second time second time. Yep. You're making the second time count. We with eFoil South Africa, Chad and James have set this all up for us to showcase for you just what is beautiful. Is it a craft? Is it a vessel? What do you call it? Call it what you want. Beautiful electric surfboards. Electric boards. E-foil boards with the fin and the long thing hovering over water. Now looking at this I believe everything is in our control. Obviously a bit of body weight and balance I imagine but what is that? That is the remote, accelerator pedal, the brakes, the gear lever, all in one. I'm just trying to contemplate how I'm going to be able to do all this at the same time. change gears. Yeah. No, you have to change gears. Change. So looking at the beauties, which one are you going in? I'm going on that one. What are you going on? Also this one. So there's a cue for me. A day like today and a really special day like today, Gugu, what we're about to experience, uh, I'm actually like uh, shaking, but it wouldn't be possible without two special people. Thanks for having us here, guys. The beautiful dam behind us, but all about what's on the left of us. Tell us a little bit about these e-foils, uh, Chad. Yeah, so e-foiling uh, to Joburg is brand new. Um, I haven't seen the board in, uh, in Joburg until the Festival of the Motoring. Right. And I'm a new, uh, a new addition to the team, uh, for, uh, previously e-foil Cape Town now eFoil South Africa, and I'll be the small component that is eFoil Johannesburg, operating at the moment out of Emerentia Dam, but the plan is to move around to all the, all the nice uh, clean patches of water. Um, so thanks to the clubs for hosting us, the Normal Air Diving Club, the Sailing Club, Emirates Sailing Club, and the Bulamanzi Canoe Club, you know, have given up their grass for us this afternoon. Sure. And the water, the water belongs to the people of Johannesburg, so um, we're looking forward to making a few a few uh, blooper videos for you guys. <laughs> we'll see, we'll figure it out. But James, can you do this in any dam? Yeah, as long as, as, long as the water is deep enough that you're not going to hit the foil. That's the main part. You can take it out in the ocean, uh, any dam, lake, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference as long as you don't hit the foil on the bottom. So I've also seen guys do this without the, the electric part of it and just pumping. Can you work these and pump them or is it just pure electric? 
There are some models where you can get the without the prop guard and the props do fold back, but I wouldn't suggest that it seems quite hard to do. I haven't seen anyone do that, but it's easier just to buy the normal hydrofoil. But now you spoke about the depth of the dab. Tell us a little bit about the do's and the don't when you go and you take this out. What are we needing to know? Um, it's actually pretty basic. The main part is, is if you ever feel unstable or that you're going to fall, it's going too fast, you literally just let go of the trigger. Right. Or just jump off. Let go of the trigger when you jump off, <laughs> otherwise you're going to have to have a long swim to find the board. Yeah. But you let go of the trigger, the board will stop and you'll fall off and you'll go find the board afterwards. And the other thing is, if, your board is if the board is falling to the right, you fall to the right, otherwise you fall to the left, you fall to the left. Um, because otherwise you're going to fall on the foil and that's not going to be very pleasant. Thank you for that. Now something interesting, Chad, your target market. Male, female, young, old, who are we looking at? Please say a little bit of old. You, see, you got that all right there. Female, male, young, old, good looking, not so good looking. Thanks, Chad. I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's really the, the, the principle behind it is that it's not very um, taxing on the body. If you are lying down, sitting down, not, not accelerating too fast, it's once you're up and foiling that you'll feel it in your legs a little bit. Um, but it's, it's t generally easier. Some have said it's the, the easiest um, standing water sport. Well, I watched on the internet and the guy said, I love snowboarding, I love water skiing. Once I've done this, those things can go to eight, he said. This is the only sport I want to do. Google, I think it's time to get out. Are you ready? I'm ready as a bean. Are you ready? As a lentil, let's go. <laughs> Based on your performance uh, of putting wetsuits on, I think it's best to, to kit you up correctly. Thank you. We're going to need some uh, head, head gear. Yes, here. yes, yes. Don't hurt yourself, don't Michael. Want, uh, Thank you. I don't want to lose any more of those brain cells. Eh? And then if I could ask you guys just to look at the water for a lovely shot. <laughs> It's been amazing. Um, as you can see behind me, Mike's still falling over and trying to find his feet. But the experience is exhilarating. And the nice thing about it is that it's effortless, right? Unlike surfing where every time you fall, you got to paddle. This year, you just hold the trigger and you just keep going. And the beauty about this whole thing is that it's sunset. So you're just floating and gliding over water and you've got the sun setting behind you. A bit of glare, but it's just fantastic. another incredible day time to sum up being on the water it feels like surfing but you're actually flying so I'd like to say I did a domestic flight a very short hop and uh, not even a 15 minute flight you did an international flight <laughs> and flight. you did a total long haul flight <laughs> what was it like Gugu? it was amazing it's a completely different feeling to, to anything I've done Especially once you get the board up in the air. You're just gliding over water. Board up in the air, talk to the audience. Don't talk to me about stuff I didn't do. Now the thing about it is that, and we always say this, with the drifting that we do, that I've done, it's about feel. This thing is exactly that. It's just about feel. You can't afford to think about it too much. Once you start thinking, it's just... I wouldn't say I mastered it, but somebody who did was Mr. James Masters. Tell us what it takes to do it the way you do it. Really, it's just about practice. You've just got to spend more time on the water, a couple more lessons, and you guys both would have been masters at it. I agree. Another two weeks and I swear I'll get this. <laughs> Look, I was flying international. I don't know what you're talking about, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, you'd need about two more hours. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks, two hours. Yeah. So, Jamie, tell me something here. What does it take to do this? For someone watching who wants to get into this kind of thing, what's, what's the starting process? How do you get into it? I think the best thing you can do is literally just book a lesson with us. Come through either to our dam in Stelis, to Hart Bay, or to now Emerentia here in Joburg. And you can book a lesson, give the board a go. One of our instructors will be on the water with you to teach you how everything works, start you up, and then you'll, you'll be flying in no time. Flying over water in no time? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. So for those of you who want to experience what me and Gugu did this afternoon, efoilsouthafrica.co.za, the most magnificent guys, the most magnificent product, enjoy.
Coming up after the break, Gugu can't believe his luck as he makes his debut as a judge at the Cobra Club of South Africa's concourse event. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. Today I'm making my debut as a judge. I am out at the Cobra Club of South Africa concourse and I'm going to be judging all these vehicles you're seeing around me. So it's a very interesting judging process because it's very different to any other judging process. You're just judging the cars based on what they are. I'm going to take you through the entire thing. You're going to get to see some amazing cars that you don't get to see every day. I hope you're excited because I am. I'm nearly halfway through the judging process and it's pretty obvious that these guys put a lot of effort into getting their cars so ready and prepared for this. So the problem with that though for me is that it makes my job 10 times more difficult because the cars are nearly perfect. The one thing that also makes it tricky is that each car is different. So you're judging every single car based on its own unique characteristics, what they've done, what they haven't done and it just makes it take so long. But I'm appreciating the work that they've done and halfway through, we're gonna get through the second half and we'll catch up again. I'm finally done doing the judging and I've managed to catch up with one of uh, the competitors here for this concourse, Gary, how's it? Well and you? We've chatted quite a bit yes. and um, you own one of these? Yes, uh, the blue baby over there. The blue baby over there. So, how did you get into this? What made you get one of these babies and, and, and just get into the lifestyle? I think like every youngster, it was my dream to... I loved these cars when I saw them many, many years ago as a youngster and I thought, one day I've got to own one. And they're absolutely timeless because even I dream about them. Yeah. And I'm much younger. Yeah. And I mean, you've got, you got old cars here, you've got brand new cars and they all all are unique it's absolutely ama amazing huh? it makes my job judging them a <laughs> lot harder because all are unique so how long have you had that so i've bought it uh, i think it must be 10th hand um i uh, i've had it about uh, for three years or so yeah um and i bought it my son was even more keen than me to own a cobra so he went and found one um, and then we were told to join the ac cobra club and uh, that's what one does as one does Right? Exactly. Yeah. And you've got like-minded people yeah. Um, there must be what more than 40 cars here tonight today. And we're having such fun looking at each other's unique cars and uh, enjoying the camaraderie. I mean the club is growing. It's more than 200 members now. Um, and we really, really are a, a great club. We're going, we've got 28, uh, 26 outings this year alone. In one year? One year. Um, so almost every second weekend there's a, an outing. So it's fantastic. We're having a great time. Any advice for someone looking to join the club besides buying a car? Well, you can join it and you don't have to, you don't have to be a member, you don't have to own a Cobra to join the club. And then you get invited to all the, all the drives and I mean like today I arrived uh, by myself and then sometimes if you're, uh, if you're keen to go on a ride and you don't have a ride, you say, look, um, anybody, is there anybody with a spare seat and invariably our spouses or something can't come with us. And so you that come is so join. awesome. I've never heard of that in a club. Yeah. That is just, yeah. That's amazing. So if you want to join, whether you have a car or not, you can still join the AC Cobra Club. Gary, thank you so much for the chat, man. Cheers, man. Look forward to seeing you again at thank some you. point. Lovely. Coming up after the break, Cobras come in all shapes and sizes, and so do their owners, and Gugu chats to a bunch of them. Did you know? Carol Shelby was brought in to boost Ford's struggling GT racing program in late 1964. 
Shelby, who had won Le Mans as a driver in 1959, turned things around. Ford swept the Le Mans podium in 1966 by taking first, second and third places. Carol Shelby is the only person to win the 24 Hours Le Mans as a driver with Aston Martin in 1959, as a manufacturer with the Cobra Daytona Coupe in 1964 and as a team manager in 1966 and 1967 for the Ford GT program. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. I'm chatting to Lombard, the owner of this beautiful backdraft over here. Lombard, how's it? Fine, uh, thanks to you. Good. Tell yes. me, what is the difference between an AC Cobra and a backdraft? I've been wrecking my brain and sure some people don't even know the difference. Explain to us. An AC Cobra, AC was uh, the old original English company that, yeah. uh, that, man, that, that started manufacturing a little roadster that old, old Carroll Shelby, he eventually converted that into a muscle car like you see here. And then uh, a lot of companies, they uh, got on the bandwagon and they started manufacturing the replicas. Backdraft is just one of the manufacturers. They are based in um, Durban. Yes. And then there's another big, um, uh, big manufacturer, Superformance. They are based in Port Elizabeth. And those two companies are the main companies uh, building and, and exporting. Yeah, they build them, they build them uh, with export to America, but, the, and, but they build them without engine and gearbox. So they build the running car without engine or gearbox, they call it a, a, a roller, mm -hmm. and then they export them to wherever in the world, and yeah. then they keep a few locally in South Africa. And, and then guys, guys like you are I able to get your hands on them. To grab and got hold of one that they actually kept, yeah. and then I personalized it to my... my that specs. was my next question. So yeah. you personalize it, you get the shell, and you have to personalize it, or do you personalize it while it's in the factory being yeah. made? In, in 2017, I ordered the car. Yeah. I, called, I called Backdraft and I went and visited them. Uh, um, uh, uh, Tony Martin, he's, an, he's a legend in the South African racing scene. Um, he's, the, he's, he's one of the co-owners of Backdraft and I spoke to him and to um, John Scott there at Backdraft. And then I, I, I compiled the build sheet for yeah. this car. Um, okay. The color, even the color of the stripes, no, the done. color of the everything, the color of the interior, um, everything I, I specified according to what I wanted. And then they made a package uh, that would fit me. Yeah. And uh, we agreed on a price and then they started building, they built about uh, two months uh, for them to build the car. And then in uh, January 2018, I went up to the factory and I collected the car. No, it looks, it looks really, really nice. How often do you drive this? <laughs> now you're asking the right person. Um, I like to, to drive my car. This is not a trailer queen. Um, I drove this car as it is now from Bloemfontein yesterday. Yesterday from afternoon. From Bloem. Bloemfontein, four and a half hours here. I, would, I drove to Joburg. It's, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's, it's a lot a, of noise. It's an analog, brutal driving experience. Wow. And that's why we use these cars. Um, we don't like air conditioning. We don't like a creature comforts, that's what this is. It is it is a brutal driving experience. So Lombard, you entered your car yeah. for the concourse. Yeah. How do you fancy your chances? Um, uh, this car actually last year um, on, on, the Cobra com uh, on the Cobra Club concourse, it came second overall, second the specific overall. one. Um, it won the backdraft category, it won the, the, the Lexus engine category. Um, is that a Lexus engine? That is a Lexus 4.3 litre V8 engine. And I opted for this specific engine due to the fact that it is reliable, it is bulletproof, it is, it is easy on fuel um, and uh, because I drive it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've put a lot of miles on the car. Um, you can see it's got a lot of um, little stone chips. I didn't even... Uh, Enjoy the car. I, I didn't even take out the, the, the bugs from the radiator because really? that, uh, yeah. that is part of the, the, the scars of life. Yeah. It, is the, it is the battle scars of the scars car. of life, right? <laughs> scars of life. Lombard, stunning yes. car, beautiful car, Thank lovely you. meeting you. Thank you. And I wish you all the best this year. I'm chatting to Rudy, who's the owner of this cherry, hey? Yeah, candy cherry, apple. That's candy, a candy apple. Yeah, candy it's a Holly apple. Davidson candy apple. Oh, it's stunning. So, overall, how long have you had this baby? Three years, just over three, three years, years now. Yeah. 
Now, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed by this car, Rudy. I mean, you've done the interior, the stitching. Yes. It's just stunning. Thanks, man. So tell me what you've done to the car. Okay, well, there's nothing I haven't done, okay. right? So I took the body off, mm -hmm. got it to the raw chassis, uh, took the paint off of it, re-welded it, cut the chassis so I could sit in it because I'm quite tall. Yeah. So lowered that, uh, redid the suspension, put the body back on, then it wasn't symmetrical. Jeez. So cut wheel arches out, created molds, redid Jeez. the chassis, oh, the, the, the body, made it yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, then we painted it mm -hmm. twice because a guy made a mistake and First dropped First time round. No, 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 they painted it perfect, but the guy dropped a piece of metal on it and we had to paint oh. it again. Then we had the motor rebuilt, the gearbox rebuilt, the diff rebuilt, put that in. I brought in the suspension from overseas so the nose can lift up. So yeah, every every single thing, the interior is custom designed and done. So yeah, everything, yeah. yeah, everything's been redone. So it's safe to assume that you're not selling this, really? Dude, you'd have to offer me stupid money. <laughs> <laughs> because you spent stupid every, money. Everything has a price. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I spent more than it cost to buy. Jeez. Let's talk about the engine. What's in there? I haven't seen it. It's a Ford motor. Uh -huh. It's uh, originally a 289, mm -hmm. but then I stroked it to a 347. So it's a 5.7 litre. Okay, so 247 or 3, 3, 347. 347. Yeah. Is that American terms for 5.7 litre? Yeah, well, so you'll see basically they talk about the cubic inches cubic of the motor. Cubic inches, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, like Holly Davidson does. C correct, yeah. So it's a 347 cubic inch motor. Okay, V8. Which is, which is a five, yeah, yeah, V8, which is a... Rudy, I have been thoroughly impressed by your car. Thanks, brother. And um, all the best. Obviously, you entered. Thanks, mate. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I did judge. Cool. I'm not going to say whether you slipped me an envelope <laughs> or not. No. We're not going to talk about that. But all the best. Thanks, brother. Like Appreciate it. Cheers, it. thanks, man. Cheers, good, good. When I agreed to be a judge for this concourse, I had no idea what I was signing up for. It's been a long, grueling, but rewarding day. I got to meet some amazing people, hear their stories. I got to see some incredibly beautiful cars and learn about these cars and the differences in these cars. Now, the interesting part about this concourse and competition is that the winner is not being announced today. So they're going to go tally up all the votes and score everything and the winner will only be announced in about two months time. So it's going to be a, a thing of patience and waiting. May the best man win. Coming up next week on All Things Motoring International, Mike joins the Lotus Club on a road trip and stops at the Black Horse Brewery in Michalisburg to chat about all things Lotus. Ranging from old models like the Lotus 7 that is considered the embodiment of Lotus philosophy of performance through low weight and simplicity. This is a show even Colin Chapman would enjoy. The last time I wore a wetsuit was in 1997 in Mozambique. I hated it then, and now I remember why I haven't done it for 26 years. <laughs> I see a remote control there. Uh -huh. To me, this looks like a mic. Guys, I need help, please. Can you help me? <laughs> it's been amazing. Um, as you can see behind me, Mike's still falling over and trying to find his feet. Everything you just said is <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> weren't you in the water? Yeah, exactly. Weren't you in the water? <laughs> If you had to say, who doesn't look like a surfer boy here? <laughs> Do you need any motoring advice? From where or what to buy and where to sell? Visit the All Things Motoring International website and click the Advice tab to ask Mikey. All Things Motoring International was brought to you by SA's most trusted online vehicle platform, Change Cars. Our name says it all. There is no safer online vehicle platform. That's not an opinion, that's a fact.